All right, so today we're working on a Fender eight-string pedal steel guitar that came out of a 1963 Fender 1000, uh, which was a double-neck pedal steel. It was a transitional year. This was the first year that they used the Jaguar-style pickup. This pickup has this metal frame that goes around it that helps cut down some of the noise that you get on a single coil. And uh, it actually changes the sound a little bit. That's why a Jaguar pickup sounds a little bit different than a, than a Strat pickup. Looks like hell because it was found buried in a barn. It's totally dead and I uh, figured I'd take this chance to show you some of the tricks we use for restoring an old pickup like this. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got here. We've got a, basically an eight string Jaguar pickup. On the back we have the black lead which is connected to a ground which is connected to this frame. That's part of what helps cut down on the noise. Uh, the white lead and then this right here is the remnants of a, a foam pad that was under a lot of uh, fender pickups you know that, that allowed you instead of having springs these had these foam pads and over time they tend to compress and become these kind of black hunks of goo. Here's our meter. I can't see that but our, our coil is open so this pickup is dead and will probably need to be rewound. So one of the first things I want to do with this is just clean it up a little bit. Um, this is chrome plated and it, it does have some scratches and, uh, and uh, rust going on there, but a lot of this is just mud. So let's just start off simple, basic, just a, a um, paper towel, wet. See, it's already looking better, isn't it? All right, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and get this cover off and see what it looks like underneath. This thing was actually buried in the mud in a barn. These pickup magnets are completely covered in iron shavings, as you can see that. So the way I take that off is this is modeling clay. You can go down to Michael's, get you some of this, wherever, wherever you like to buy art supplies. And I just dab it on there and it, it picks up the iron shavings and leaves it clean. Once I've cleaned all the metal shavings off, I just go ahead and uh, use an old toothbrush and, and brush things up. Like I said, I'm not trying to make things look brand new. I'm not trying to polish these magnets so that they're nice and shiny. Uh, they need to have a, a patina that looks appropriate for the year that they are. Also go ahead and do the same with the cover. It's, that's just mud. That's, Frankly, it's so nasty, I'm going to take it in the in the bathroom and uh, scrub it out with the toothbrush in the sink. Alright, so here we are back from the uh, sink there, and I just scrubbed it out with a little water and uh, buffed it out with a piece of denim that I keep around for this sort of thing. You can see me using it in some of my other videos, and it uh, looks pretty good, I think. I think that looks very 1963 appropriate. Next, we're going to go ahead and desolder this and take this uh, comb off of the pickup. Now, as you can see, now that we've got it off, the uh, metal shavings are all around the coil and on the bottom of the magnets, so we'll have to clean that up too. We'll have to clean out the inside of the bracket, the uh, comb, some people call it, and probably end up rewinding this, and we'll put it all back together. All right, so I cleaned it up a little bit and uh, tried to find the ends of the the wires to see if I could just uh, reattach the ends and and save the original winding. That is not the case. I can't get it to work, so I'm going to have to go ahead and strip this wire off and rewind it. Got some of the original wire out in the shop with my winding machine, and uh, so we'll just go ahead and do that.
So there it is all cleaned up and looking sharp. And the next trick is going to be to go ahead and wind it up. Alright, so here we are out in the shop. Remember I told you the uh, hole in the middle is for uh, running a screw through there so that you can center up your pickup real well. I put a little piece of tape on the ends of the bobbins. This is to keep wire from snagging as we come around the ends. The ends are the most likely place for your wire to snag when you're winding. So if you put a little piece of tape on here, it acts like a little ramp and keeps it constantly bumping up over the edge of the bobbin. Put it on both ends. What kind of wire do we put on this? Well, Fender only used two different gauges of wire uh, in the 60s, which would be um, 43 gauge, which was mostly used for Telecaster pickups, and 42 gauge. Now this, this pickup here was used uh, with 42 gauge wire, and there were only two types of uh, 42 gauge wire. One would be heavy form vor, which is the type of insulation that was on it, and the other would be plain enamel. So how do we figure out whether we should use plain enamel or heavy form for it? Well, remember a minute ago when we took all that wire off? We have the original wire, and we know this is original wire. This pickup's never been rewound. I just, I know that because I was there when this thing was pulled out of the barn. Now on your left, you're going to see uh, heavy form vor, which is very copper colored. It's a clear colored uh, insulation that goes on the wire. Mostly clear, anyway. And on the right, we have the dark reddish brown that is typical of Fender and Gibson plain enamel. And our big ball of wire clearly matches the plain enamel better than the form for. Not really rocket science. And there we are at 8,016 wines. It's pretty good to me. And, uh, go ahead and take this back to the bench and solder it up. All right, I went ahead and cleaned this up. This is the uh, the frame that goes around the, the coil. Some people call this a comb. Some people call it the claw. Some people call it the shield. I don't know what you call it. Call it what you like. It cleaned up really nice. It's It's got a little bit of scratching and uh, deplating going on on this side, but this side looks nearly brand new. So that's taken care of. This is the coil, the bobbin, all wound up with brand new wire. Look at how good that looks. If there's anything you think I'm skipping in one of these, it's probably because I've already done it in another video. So go ahead and watch some of my other Fender videos. I've done a lot of Fender pickups. There's little little bits of information in each one that are exclusive. Uh, like this next bit I'm about to show you. This is Fender style pushback wire. Now, you want to know why it's called pushback wire? It's called pushback wire because you just grab it by the end and pull the insulation back. You can pull it all the way off if you want to, if you needed a, like a, a plain wire for a ground or something like that. But we want about this much wire so that we can loop it through this pickup and uh, establish our ground and everything. So let's go ahead and do that. That goes all the way through like that. And we go ahead and go through this other piece. See how we do that? It's looped all the way through the eyelet. And we pull that down nice and snug. And we'll solder this joint. We do the same thing on the other end with the white wire. Not quite as much this time because we're not doing the ground with the white wire. The ground is done with the black wire. Push that back a little bit. Put it in through this hole. down into the other hole. This is common for a lot of different kinds of fender applications. Then we'll solder that joint. Now before we go into attaching the, uh, the, the shield thingy, let's go ahead and get our meter and check. Let's make sure everything's working before we go any further. And that is uh, 6.92. Put the meter away for a minute and uh, go ahead and install our, our shield piece. First thing I want to do, you see how high that is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull that down nice and tight. There we go. So 
See, looks good, looks good. And uh, this is our other end. And now we're gonna install the shield and this little piece of wire here is what's gonna end up grounding our pickup. And we solder that connection, and that's, that's that. There's our solder joint, all nice and shiny like it should be. Mm, looks good. Some cold solder joints from this crowd. All right, and here she is back from the wax pot. Um, pretty. See how nice those coils look? And the uh, last thing to do is to put the cover back on. And uh, it just so happens that I have the original mounting screws, so we'll go ahead and include those with it. One of the things that I like to do with any of these old fender pickups, or any old pickups that I get a hold of, is I get my Gauss meter out and I check the power of the magnets in them. Um, and this is something I've been doing for years. Uh, I originally started doing it because of the claim that uh, magnets lose power over time and you know those old magnets that have lost a little bit of their power are the ones that sound really good and that's BS but you know whatever. So there we have it that's how we bring this uh, incredibly odd and rare bit of uh, Fender's musical history back to life and hopefully this will go into someone's restoration project. Uh, I don't know. I guess somebody could build an 8-string Jaguar and put this in it. That would be kind of weird. Uh, that's it for now. See you later.